In this video, we're going to talk about how to make a VCO circuit. That is a voltage controlled oscillator circuit. And we're going to do this by using the 555 timer integrated circuit. That's going to be the most important element that will make this circuit work. Pins one through four are on the left. These include the ground pin, the trigger pin, the output pin, and pin number four, the reset pin. Pins five through eight are on the right side. Now, one of the most important pin in this circuit is pin number five, the control voltage pin. That pin controls the frequency of the oscillator circuit. And using a voltage divider network composed of resistors and even potentiometers, we can adjust the voltage at pin five, thus adjusting the frequency of the oscillator circuit. So let's begin with this video. By the way, don't forget to check out the links in the description section below for other similar content. Let's begin by drawing the VCO circuit. So first we need to draw the pulse generator circuit using the 555 timer. And that circuit requires two resistors and a capacitor. The two resistors are in series with each other. And they're also in series with the capacitor. Now the negative part of the polarized capacitor is going to be connected to the ground. And pin number one of the 555 timer is the ground pin. So you want to connect that there. So let's put number one for the ground pin. So that's the positive terminal of the capacitor. And this is the negative terminal. Now the positive part of the capacitor will be attached to pin number two and at the same time pin number six. Pin number two is the trigger pin. Pin number six is the threshold pin. And we're going to call this R1, R2, and C1. Now between R1 and R2, we're going to connect that to pin seven. So pin seven, that is the discharge pin. Now the other part of R1, we're going to connect it to pin eight. And this is going to go to the positive terminal of the battery or to our voltage source. So the voltage that we could use could be five volts or 15 volts. So let's set it to six volts. And this is pin number eight. So that's the plus VCC pin. At the same time, we're gonna attach it to pin number four, the reset pin. Pin number three is the output pin. So this circuit right now is going to give us a rectangular waveform that looks like this. The frequency of the pulse signal that we're going to get right now is 1.44 divided by R1 plus 2R2 times C1. If you increase R1, the frequency will decrease. If you increase the capacitance of C1, the frequency will decrease as well. So if you want to increase the frequency, decrease R1 and C1. So this is just a regular pulse generator oscillator circuit. To create the voltage controlled oscillator circuit, we need to use pin number five. So let's create a voltage divider network using two resistors. So we're going to call this resistor R3 and this resistor R4. So they form a voltage divider network. And let's say this is pin number five. We need to connect it between R3 and R4. And so the voltage across R4 will control the frequency of this oscillator as well. If R1 and C1 are fixed. Now, to calculate the voltage across the, that voltage divider network, so the voltage at, let's call this point A, so relative to the ground, this is just going to be VA, and VA is going to be equal to VCC, which is 6 volts in this case, times R4 divided by the sum of R3 and R4. Now, the voltage at point A 
will be equal to this value relative to ground as long as the 555 timer doesn't draw too much current from the voltage divider network. The more current that you draw from the voltage divider network, the voltage will be less than VA. It's going to deviate from it. So the greater the magnitude of current that you draw away from it, the less the voltage will be from VA. So just keep that in mind. But you can approximate VA using this formula, assuming that the 555 timer doesn't draw too much current away from it. Now, by increasing R4, you can increase VA. So R4 controls VA. The same is true for R3. If you increase R3, VA will be affected, but it's going to decrease. So just keep that in mind. So by adjusting R4 or R3, you can adjust the voltage at pin 5, the control voltage. Now, as you increase the voltage of point A, or the voltage applied to pin 5, the frequency of the output, the frequency of this uh, rectangular waveform decreases. It's an inverse relationship. Now, another way in which you can control the voltage at pin 5 is by using a potentiometer. So instead of using R3 and R4 across uh, the positive 6 volts and the ground, you could use a variable resistor known as a potentiometer. And here's a symbol for that. So this would be pin 5, the control pin. This would be the ground. And this would be the positive 6 volts at the top. And so you could tune the frequency that you desire uh, with this circuit. So that's how you can create a voltage control oscillator. Even though you don't get a perfect sine wave, you do get a square wave in which you can control the frequency. So I've actually tried to build a circuit to see the relationship between R4, the voltage at pin 5, and the output frequency. So here's the data for that. R1 was set to 10 kilo ohms. R2 was set to 1 kilo ohm. And C1, I use a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Let me decrease the font size. R3 was set to 10 kilo ohms. And that is about it. And the voltage, the measured voltage wasn't 6, but positive 5.5. So now let's make a table between R4, the voltage at pin 5, and the output frequency. So using a resistance of 100 kilo ohms, the voltage at pin 5, you can calculate it based on the voltage divider network, is around 5 volts. The output frequency measured was 834.6 hertz. Using a 51 kilo ohm resistor, the voltage was now 4.6 volts. The frequency was 917.5 hertz. Using a resistance of 22 kilo ohms, the voltage was 3.78 volts. The frequency was 1.12 kilohertz, which is 1,120 hertz. And at a resistance of 10 kilo ohms, the voltage dropped to 2.75, and the frequency increased to 1.52 kilohertz. Then using a 5.1K resistor, the voltage is now 1.86 volts, frequency 2.16. And then at a, a lower resistance of 2.2 kilo ohms, the voltage is now 0.99 volts, and the frequency, it for some reason jumped pretty high to 7.06 kilohertz. So the pattern kind of changed at that point. And using the 1 kilo ohm resistor, the voltage was about 0.5 volts, frequency 9.493 kilohertz. But the general trend is this. As you decrease R4, the voltage at pin 5 decreases and the frequency increases. Likewise, if you increase R4, the voltage goes up, the frequency goes down. And so there is an inverse relationship between the voltage applied at pin 5 and the frequency of the output. And that's what you want to keep in mind with this circuit. As you increase the voltage 
at pin 5, the frequency goes down. So that's basically it for this video. Now you know how to create a voltage controlled oscillator circuit by using the 555 timer, a few resistors, and a capacitor. Thanks for watching.